There's an old line by Studs Terkel, the author, who said, the secret to success is falling down eight times and getting up nine. That's about all you can do. So, even though Parkinson's has dropped me down, I still, try to, you know, I become the gravity of my own being, so to speak. I, I stand up as strong as I can. I was working on a piece in 2000 here in my studio one night uh, on the table over there for uh, a show. And I was having a lot of difficulty with my left hand, which holds the chisel. Um, as you can see here, as I try to move it into position, uh, it's sort of uh, clawed up a bit here, but I was unable to hold the chisel steady that night, and I attributed it to a, a pinched nerve. It sort of let me know, you know, the body always tells you when something's wrong. At that particular time, it was a little overwhelming for me to imagine that this was a long-term situation. But as time progressed, I found out that uh, it was indeed Parkinson's. I spent a good part of my life working with stone and, uh, and seeing what I could do with it. Yeah, there was, there's a physicality in sculpture. I don't want to call it a dance, but it's, a, it's an interaction between the material and yourself that uh, physically exhausts you in the end. And uh, I was always someone who loved to work with my hands. The irony was that uh, I worked with this material with my hands, and now I can't do that anymore. This uh, was the first thing I made was this table. I made it in the backyard of my house before I had a studio. And uh, it's uh, something I think I'll keep forever. It's probably one of the most uh, precious items in this space to me more so than the stone here itself is, is this table. I mean, uh, when I came to this table, I, I approached it with one reason, one reason only, and that was to make art. It wasn't uh, had any other purpose. Probably since my studio is closing, it seems to become the most lonely object in this space. I remember that when I was filing for disability, I was talking to an attorney who was looking over my resume and said that one of the things that uh, could possibly hurt you is the fact that you have this uh, very diverse resume and this large skill set. So they may look at you as somebody who could possibly find, be resourceful enough to find something to do. Uh, ironically, my whole life has been spent that way. I've been a very resourceful person and a person who's always, when a door's open, I've walked through it. Hi, Rita. This is Frank Ferraro. My birth date is April 7th, 1961. I have a question for Dr. Berman concerning, concerning my medication. Uh, I'd like to actually talk to her about it, or you could tell her that I'm having problems with the, the most recent dose that she prescribed. Actually, it's having a reverse effect on me. I was officially diagnosed right after 2000, but I started to show symptoms uh, back probably when I was in, in 99. I, mean, I was kind of naive as to what the symptoms were going to be. I mean, I, I thought, like right now, I'm having tremors which is what I thought pretty much the disease was basically all about the tremors. But there's another aspect of the disease called brandokinesia, which is a slowing down of the motor skills. And I have that pretty severe. Having been somebody who worked in the arts, did a lot of physical work with large pieces of stone and sculpture, I've sort of retired myself to work with the media arts on a laptop computer and sound equipment. I have a portable DAT recorder, which I use high-end microphones and I go out and I collect sounds in the environment. I bring those sounds back to my studio in here, which I call my studio, my, works, my workbench here. And I uh, manipulate and put effects on those sounds to make little pieces of music. Some days I feel like Sisyphus, you know, just pushing that boulder up the hill. Well, the first thing that one of the neurologists told me was that there's no cure for Parkinson's, that the drugs basically are masking the symptoms. So, you know, it's kind of like putting a Halloween mask on a devil. It's just, it's still there, but, you know, it just looks prettier. Um, I always equate Parkinson's to being like a tug of war. It kind of pulls you away from yourself, and the only way you can weigh things in your favor is to add more medications. I mean, for me, I've had it now, like I said, eight or nine years. It's, I've gotten progressively worse, so I mean, I notice all the changes. I mean, initially it was my left side, now it's my right hand left. I can't stand for long periods of time. I can't sit. My voice gets very weak. My breathing is shallow. Uh, you know, just fumbling about, just uh, picking up the cell phone is impossible. Uh, just uh, working on the computers. I've spent hundreds of dollars on control devices, mice, and 
mouse mice yeah. controllers <laughs> there are many mice mice and mouse boxes mice. full of them trying different ways to do different ergonomic designs and joysticks and voice control and they all work for a short period of time and as the disease progresses I have to reinvent that again so it's very frustrating for me challenges were all about you know the unknown going out and facing the unknown that was a challenge to me now the challenges to me are just the mundane things of everyday life just tying my shoe putting on my shirt now those are my big challenges now that I face as opposed to what I used to anticipate wanting to overcome so you know I don't feel ripped off but, uh, or cheated, but uh, I, I wish, you know, it's the one thing that I, I, I tell younger people all the time, and that is that, you know, when it comes to money, you can always make more of it. And I don't want to downplay the fact of being well prepared in life, but when you waste or spend time, it's gone. You never get it back. And uh, that's one very frustrating to me. There were days that I look back and I think to myself, that could have been one more day, two more days I could have been in my studio. I could have made one more piece or two more pieces.